The Astounding Broccoli Boy by Frank Cottrell Boyce. Who will win in the fight between good and evil? Read on. When Nurse Rock had taken our blood the next morning, she said, Interesting. Tommy Lee just gave me a blood sample without giving me a hard time. No tantrums, no tears. What's brought about this change of behaviour? Maybe you're getting better. Or maybe you've lost the will to live. She sniffed. By the way, you smell of chocolate. Isn't that interesting, considering you're not supposed to be eating anything except what we give you? And we would never give you chocolate. She could smell chocolate. She really was a bloodhound. It was going to be hard to keep anything secret from her. I said so to Tommy Lee. We're going to need to think up codes or signals or something. Wait a minute, he said. Is this a meeting? Are we having a meeting? Well, I was just saying. When a team has got things to discuss, it has to convene a meeting. Like in kickboxing. Do it properly. Someone writes everything down. That's the secretary. You have to have a treasurer and a special meeting room, like a club room. Superheroes don't have club rooms. They have secret headquarters. Yeah, we need one of them as well. A secretary, a treasurer, and a secret headquarters. The minute he said secret headquarters, we both went quiet and glum. How could we find a secret headquarters if we were locked in a fish tank where everyone could see everything we did, and we couldn't even speak because they could hear us over the intercom? Unless... Tommy, think about this. We're in a room high above a big city. No one knows we're here. No one can get in or out without a code. This is our secret headquarters. It's so secret that even the people who come in here, the doctors and nurses, even they don't know it's a secret headquarters. Because it's cunningly disguised as an isolation ward in a hospital. Tommy Lee looked around the room for a while. There's not that much to look at. Two beds, two bedside cabinets, a desk and a chair. Now she looks different once you know it's a secret headquarters, he said. Yes, I said, especially the map. What map? The map you drew. It's not a map, it's just a picture. We were both looking at it. It had everything on it. That dark bit must be the zoo where we were last night. This is Chinatown. That's the river. I wrote the names on with a sharpie. It made the room feel like the centre of operations. That's a good map, isn't it? said Tommy Lee proudly. Maybe cartography is one of your superpowers. You could be the navigator. I want to be the treasurer, really. We don't have any treasure. I've got 30 quid that those ladies gave me. He showed me three crumpled £10 notes, plus a mobile phone that someone gave me to take a picture with just before we ran away. So I've got treasure. That makes me the treasurer. So you're the secret. You're the secretary. You need to write an agenda. Secret Agenda Item 1. Superhero names. We need some. Item 2. Superhero equipment. Item 3. Superhero mission. Item 4. Superhero strengths and weaknesses. Top secret. Eat after reading. After he'd read it, Tommy Lee said, Eat what after reading? The secret agenda. What for? To keep it a secret. I've only just had breakfast. OK, I'll eat it. He passed me back the paper and I chewed it to a pulp. So, item one. What was item one? Tommy Lee, you just read The Secret Agenda. I only read the bit about eating it. It got me so confused I forgot to read the rest. (laughs) Item one. Superhero names. We've got to be called Green something, said Tommy Lee. There are too many green things already. Green Hornet, Green Goblin, Green Lantern, Green Knight. We don't have to call ourselves Green something just because we're green. Think of Hulk or She-Hulk. Who? She-Hulk. She's a part-time member of the Fantastic Four. There were five people in the Fantastic Four? She's like a substitute. Four Fantastics and one on the bench. Who's the Green Knight? Not really a superhero, just a knight. But if his head got chopped off, he could pick it up and put it back on again. So he was sort of invincible. It's in King Arthur. Let's be logical. Batman is Batman because he hangs around at night. Spider-Man is Spider-Man because he was bitten by a radioactive spider. What about Robin? said Tommy Lee. Was he pecked by a radioactive Robin? No. Catwoman? No. Frogs are green. 
We could be called Frogman. That's not a superhero, that's a job. Tommy Lee is a good name. What superhero uses his first name? Imagine that. Hello, I'm Bruce Batman and this is my friend Peter Spider-Man. Oh, and here comes Dr. Bruce the Hog. Frog Boy? Sounds like a trainee frogman. I'm definitely sticking to Tommy Lee. If you use your own first name, your enemies might be able to trace your true identity and maybe kidnap your little sister or something. I haven't got a little sister. It's just me and Mum. I kidnap your mum, then. Have you met my mum? I thought about Tommy Lee's mum kickboxing. If anyone did kidnap her, they'd soon regret it. Item 2. Superhero equipment. Weed capes, at least, said Tommy Lee. And masks. What's the point of wearing masks? The super thing about it, us is our distinctive green appearance. Why cover that up with a mask? Plus, you can't really pick a costume until you have a name. It just creates confusion. Imagine Spider-Man going around in a bat cape, or Batman dressed as a spider. That is true. But Batman's got a bat cave, a bat cycle, a batmobile, and a butler. What have we got? Hypoallergenic pyjamas. We should have a vehicle at least, like a batmobile. Or an interplanetary surfboard, like Silver Surfer. A glum look came over Tommy Lee's face. That's not going to happen, he said. He lay down on his bed with his back to me, the way he used to when I first arrived. I can't go running around London in pyjamas and bare feet. My feet are important to me. They're my weapon of choice. What's the point in being superheroes if we don't have superhero transport options? Even if we had one, we couldn't drive it. Everything that had happened to us was hard to believe. It was hard to believe we'd turned green, but you could see that was true by looking in the mirror. It was much harder to believe that we'd changed inside too. We both knew we felt different, but if you thought too much about what kind of different, it seemed daft. All we could do was hold on to the feeling and see what happened, and not think too much about it. Like when you're playing Star Wars, when you're little. You know that you haven't got a real lightsaber, but as long as you keep making the noises and acting like you've got one, it doesn't matter. So that's why I said to Tommy Lee, I can drive. <laughs> no, you can't. I can. My cousins live in Ireland. We go every summer. They let me drive a tractor. Tommy Lee sat up. I said, a tractor's probably harder to drive than a car because it's high up. So if you can drive a tractor, you could probably drive anything. Think about it, Tommy Lee. What's Batman's superpower? He hasn't got one. He's just got loads of kit. Cars and boomerangs and super lightweight climbing equipment, which he bought because he's so rich. Batman's superpower is cash. That's not really superpower at all. Exactly. We are actually more super than Batman. Item 3. Superhero Mission Some people become super by accident, like being bitten by a spider or blown up by a gamma bomb. Some people are chosen to be heroes, for instance Hal Jordan, who became Green Lantern. The Green Lantern was part of the Green Lantern Corps, whose mission was to keep the universe safe from supervillains such as Sinestro. Was his name really Sinestro? Yeah. So unfair. Why? Well, if you're actually called Sinestro, you're hardly going to turn out to be good when you grow up, are you? I hate it when parents give their kids stupid names. The point is, the Green Lantern Corps uses the central power battery to fight evil through the cosmos. They can turn bombs into water. He was chosen for the job because he was good and fair and could help people. What I'm saying is, we weren't bitten by spiders or blown up by gamma bombs, so maybe we were chosen to be green. For a purpose. Yeah, but I'm not good or fair. I've got anger management issues. That is true. Also, kickboxing skills. Anger management issues plus kickboxing skills is a terrible combination. The worst. I wrote down, purpose of mission to be confirmed after further discussion. Item 4. Superhero strengths and weaknesses. All superheroes have strengths and weaknesses. For instance, the Green Lantern has the power to create physical objects out of nothing. That's a strength. On the other hand, he can't stand to look at anything yellow. Superman's strength is, well, strength. He's really strong. Except when it's kryptonite. Our strengths were... Tommy Lee can kickbox and open locks in his sleep. I can slightly teleport and have a 200% brain. We have jumped off a high building without getting hurt and survived a close encounter with a male silverback gorilla. What are our weaknesses? 
Tommy Lee said he didn't have any. I pointed out that he had a severe nut allergy. Well, that's true. What about you? I definitely don't have any weaknesses. You're weak. That's got to be a weakness. That's true. I could teach you kickboxing, then you wouldn't be so weak. Thanks. And then we can go out and kick bad guys to pieces as a team. Hurting people takes more skill than you'd think. Even superheroes turn out not to be that good at it. Look at Spider-Man in this picture, said Tommy Lee, opening the old annual I'd taken from the waiting room. Pulling your hand back like that and taking it all round the houses. He's more likely to break his own wrist than the Green Goblin's jaw. Here, I'll show you. We put our duvets on the floor to stop us being injured if we fell over. Tommy Lee asked me what I wanted to do first. Kicking or boxing? Kicking is best. Kicking, then. The first lesson in kickboxing is Tommy Lee gets hold of your foot and tries to get it to go higher than your head, while you try to stay standing up. But you fall over. The second lesson is pretty much the same. Plus, also the third and fourth are completely the same. The fifth is similar, but it takes longer to fall over, and it hurts more. According to Tommy Lee, learning to fall over is very important. Good job, as I'm getting loads of practice and I could end up world falling over champion. When I fell over for the ninth time, he fell on top of me, and we were both laughing. Rolling around on the floor laughing with Tommy Lee is not something I ever expected to do in this life. When I got up off the floor, I noticed something on the glass. A smudge of foundation makeup. It didn't take a 200% brain to work out that this meant Dr Brightside had been watching us. Somehow this made me feel uneasy. When she came to call, we tried to act less bouncy so she wouldn't be suspicious. She was unusually bouncy herself. Guess what? I'm going to give a lecture about you. That's how interesting you are. She took loads of photographs of us for her PowerPoint presentation. No, no, don't smile. You're supposed to be sick, remember? We folded our arms and tried not smiling. Wow, she said. Fierce. She showed us the pictures on her camera screen. Neither of us said anything at the time, but we were both thinking the same thing. We looked like invisible fighters of crime and injustice. After that it was the usual, blow in a tube, blood test, we in a bottle, stand next to the colour chart. It's a breakthrough, Tommy Lee, she said. That's the very first time you haven't asked me if we were getting any less green. Oh, said Tommy Lee, and are we? Not even a little bit. Oh well, never mind. I thought you did mind, a lot. I mind less now that Rory's here. Still, it must be boring for you both stuck in here. Shall I see if I can get you a PlayStation or something? Weights, said Tommy Lee. A bench press would be good. A punch bag. Anything to kick or punch, really. There might be health and safety issues with some of those things, but I'll see what they can spare down in physio. In his bed that night, Tommy Lee flicked through the old Spider-Man annual. Who would win, he said, in a fight between the Green Knight and the Green Lantern? The Green Knight only has swords and armour, whereas Green Lantern could use his ring to create an armour-piercing bazooka if he wanted. On the other hand, if you chop the Green Knight's head off, he could put it back on again. Yeah, but, said Tommy Lee, what if you chopped off his arms first? What? If you met the Green Knight and he was threatening you, all you'd need to do is chop off both his arms quick, before you chopped off his head, and then he wouldn't be able to pick up his head to put it back on. See? Strategy. That is actually quite good. I'm a warrior. We could be called the Green Knights. That might be good too. But Tommy Lee was asleep. When I was on my own in the dark, I noticed something glowing on the floor. The phone that Tommy Lee had stolen. It was warm in my hand, and the first thing I thought was, I could ring my mum. The second thing I thought was, I don't know her mobile number. Or dad's. I rang the house phone instead. No one answered it, but it was good to hear Dad's voice on Callminder, saying there was no one home just now, but there probably soon would be. Then I noticed that the battery was only at 39%, and, as we didn't have a charger, I turned it off and went to sleep.